this is why I wake up at 3 a.m. at night. And, and then they, and then they're like, hey, have you seen this article? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I've seen, I've seen it. Man, I tell you what, it's really uncool. <laughs> God, that's the only word I got. I mean, and all you idiots out there that think this show is funny and think, no, this is going to happen. And they're already putting poison in your water or your food. They're already playing games. We've already got a slow kill holocaust with different cancer rates, 2,000 to 3,000 percent up from 50 years ago. Brain disorders are off the charts. I mean, it, it's just diabetes. The honeybees are almost completely dying. Fish are washing up dead everywhere in rivers. They're, they're, they're having both sexual organs. It's just because the runoff of what we eat and drink is killing them. I mean, we're a tough, tough species, folks. We got organs designed to process huge amounts of poison. We are special. And the globalists are a group of our own species playing God, who are the aberrant psychopaths, and they've set up this system, and I, we've got to warn people. We've got to warn people. And I understand why folks can't understand this, because it's so wicked that people just can't come face to face with it. But Dr. Pianca and others, you read about these scientists that give speeches about how 90% of us need to die and how airborne Ebola is probably what's going to be the best. And then he says, I'm ready for my family to die. It's for the earth. And he gets a standing ovation with the scientist of Texas. That's just one award. He's gotten awards in Europe. It reportedly were crying in rapture. I mean, just d d demonically possessed by some wild thing of we're special. We're in an event talking about killing everyone. And, and they just get so thrilled by it, they start crying. <laughs> it's beyond anything I can imagine. And by the way, I demanded from his comments that the FBI visit him, and they did. And then he went on MSNBC and he went, Hey, man, I'm just talking about there being too many people, man. Hey, man. The guy can barely talk. You always notice the top priest of this thing are, 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 are addled weirdos. And you go to his official UT website, he's out there with his buffalo, and there's weird cryptic statements. You can't make up reality. It's too weird. He's dressed in a druidic priest outfit with a Gandalf staff talking about Lucifer. That's in my film Endgame, by the way. And I've told this story. We covered it at the time. I started getting emails and calls. And, and, and all sorts of stuff of, you know, remove this photo off the website. I don't give you permission of me there, you know, with him from the local paper or, or this other person. Don't you talk about this. And then here's my graduate paper. I'm now a Ph.D. in molecular biology and such and such. And, and then I went and searched the per people's names. They'd be in white lab coats at bioweapon labs, sending me threatening emails saying, Dr. Pianca is too liberal. We must get rid of all humans as parasites. And you look up their name, and they're in white lab coats running bioweapon facilities. I mean, do you understand the danger we're in? Can you even begin to grasp it? They're a cult of control freaks. And like moths to a flame, their intellects are so small, their souls are so crushed or non-existent, that, that, that somebody gets up and projects skulls on a wall and says, get rid of humans, and they start cheering. I'll guarantee you if they do release this airborne stuff, the mouse pox, the, the weaponized bird flu, the Ebola, they are going to scream running for whatever cure there is. That, of course, will sterilize them. And they're going to hate what happens to them. It, 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 it's, I don't know why the weak worship at the altar of power, of dark, bloody power. They worship evil. They, they, they just think it gives them power. Destruction is not power. Creation is power. It doesn't matter. If we don't start turning things around, and there's some evidence we could, but if we don't really have a real gut check and grow up, and if people, I mean, if I was a new listener driving down the highway on, on all the dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of AM and FM stations we have across the country, and I heard somebody talking like this, and I didn't know about this stuff. I would go look up what they were saying. And if I found out it was true, I would do everything in my power to warn people. Billboards, my own radio show, whatever it took. Lawsuits, you name it. If I found out that I was lying, 
If I found out that person was lying, I would do everything in my power to expose them. You know the reason we're being put on so many AM and FM stations. You know the reason they've had us down for over two years on XM. You know why we're accepted now. It's because people actually did go look. And you know what? When they look, they don't like what they find. You think I like what I find? You think I like it? You, people are like, oh, be a little more positive. Oh, don't be so negative. Hey, it's not negative. If I come home and a tree has fallen into my house, it's happened before, and I'm looking out the roof and water's pouring in. Oh, just be positive. Imagine there's not a hole in your roof. Imagine there's not water throughout your house. No, that would be mentally ill and delusional. Uh, I got some Ron Paul news, and I'm going back to your calls, and I'll get into the big judgment day thing. I already covered some of it. And nobody can seem to want to do anything about this, because even people that are awake say, well, Alex, you know, I'm a Christian. It's the end of the world you know, next month or next year. So this is all in God's plan. No, God's plan is for you to occupy the land. God's plan is for you to fight evil. Regardless of the outcome, justice be done by the heavens fall. And folks, again, I'll say it. If you don't believe in God, you better believe in the devil. I don't know how a lot of people say they believe in God but not a devil. I mean, look, if there's not a devil, I'd be surprised. I mean, I'm surprised humans could come up with stuff this evil. Well, it might as well be a devil. Because let me tell you, you can't think stuff up like this. You, you, when you, you study these people and what they're doing, you're like, you, they do that? And the tricks within tricks on top of tricks in, in ways that it's, a, and it, it's always worse than you thought. It's always, and then it's worse after that, and then worse after that. If you can think up, think it up, you can go Google searching and they're doing it and it's worse than you even thought. Bottomless pit of evil. It's a bottomless pit for a reason. And it goes to a place where we don't want to go. <laughs> my dad tells a story of uh, my sister. Uh, I think it was like four years old or something. And they were on a vacation and just she saw a few minutes of Beetlejuice. Not really that scary of a movie, but kind of creepy. And there's a waiting room in it where the dead are waiting to, you know, to go on to the next dimension or whatever. And my sister looks up at my dad and says, Daddy, don't don't ever take me there. Because they took her, you know, to Europe and South America, Central America, all that. Uh, and she said, Daddy, don't ever take me there. Because, you know, it looked like an airport waiting room or something. <laughs> don't ever take me there. <laughs> well, let me tell you something. Tyrants take us very bad places. That's the norm. And for people out there that can't get their minds around this, my frustration is that if we just learn to recognize evil, just le learn to recognize corruption. I mean, somehow it's a conspiracy theory if you talk about government corruption. That's the answer by the paid-for media. Oh, you don't trust what known liars tell you? That's crazy. The highest, I think it was uh, Lionel who was on with us uh, last week made that point. Nowadays, the highest compliment is to say somebody's crazy. It's like that Gnarls Barkley song. John, if you can dig it up, let's go out with it or let's let's come back in with it. Or I guess we have it. We'll come back in with it. And he says, you know, does that make me crazy? You know, I, He says, I wasn't crazy because I didn't know enough. I was crazy because I knew too much. And let me tell you, it's bottomless, folks. Just go take a look. <laughs> One cannot be told about the Matrix. One cannot be told about the New World Order. Look, I, 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 look, just go look. We have these headlines with these uh, backdrops out there. About, oh, the government got caught laundering $100 billion there, billions here, all running drugs, all running guns, uh, blame on the Second Amendment. Uh. Nobody gets in trouble. Oh, MF Global took that billion plus. No, I'm not getting in trouble. Got caught lying to Congress. So what? No, no big deal. Eh, take the veterans' death benefits. Eh, no big deal. Oh, really? What's coming next? See, that's the thing about going off the cliff. 
No one can believe this is all happening, even as it happens. You ever been in a car wreck? And, and, and two or three seconds, as you see that person running the red light, seems like five minutes, and you're just like, oh, my gosh, I should have looked. That person's running that red light. It happened to me once in high school. I was driving with friends. And I'm like, oh, this is not going to feel good. You know, spinning off the road. People all bleeding, hurt, chopped up. It's the same thing. I'm just like going, oh, it's really happening. Coming right at us. By the time I got blown off the road by the tornado. It felt like two minutes spinning off the road down an embankment, looking over to my dad and saying, brace for impact. Hit the oak trees. Boom, that car accordions in. We're going to go to break and get to this Ron Paul news. Uh, it, it got a lot of news because they like petty stuff, and, and, and they thought it was something to make Ron Paul look bad. He's in this diner. He gets mobbed by about... 150, the media said over 150 news people and crews. And so they start grabbing and saying, we're not leaving Ron Paul and grabbing at him. And some guy's on a bullhorn in there. Uh, so he, he goes out and, uh, this reporter, Dana Bash comes up and says, Oh, a lady was going to vote for you, but not after you rudely left. And he said, you know, that's a hit piece. That's a, that's a cheap question. Jesse Benton cuts in, campaign manager, says, we're not going to, we're going to talk to other media here that's all lined up. And they tried to spin it like, like last time they said he ran out of a, uh, interview. Of course, they cut it. He said, I'll give you 10 minutes. They did 10 minutes. Said, all right, thank you. Hey, it's fine. See you later. They cut it to say he stormed out. This time they spun it. Then they put Dana Bash on CNN yesterday to say, we sure hope he doesn't get elected because they marvel at how well he's doing, the Republican leadership. But the, we're just here to tell you, he, you still can't elect him, even if he comes in second here and wins in other states. Because I'm Dana Bash, and I tell you what to think. I get off on that, that you're unconscious and that you listen to me. Just like that's CNN for you. Notice in Fox's Christmas cards they send out, all the media is pulled by sheep. We pay for it. We support them. They think we're jokes, and it's time to wake up and call them on it.